Uh, if you had any, you know, revelations or questions that you wanted to ask, uh, now would be an excellent time for them. Our primary topic for the discussion today is going to be serve return uh, and receive in general as, as it relates to being able to receive tactically but also receive you know, tricky serves and, and different, different plans as it relates to being able to set up your game better. Um, not just get the ball on the table but be able to do it better as it relates to your own game. So, uh, is there anyone that would like to start us off with uh, a question as it relates to receive? No? Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and start by one of the big things that uh, many of you struggle with is if the other guy has a tricky serve that you have a hard time reading the type of spin. Um, and what myself and Samson and Blake and Jeff have all seen over and over again is you're unsure of what the spin is and so you just go and touch the ball. And so then you end up at the full force of whatever it is your opponent has produced and oftentimes the ball just ricochets off your racket and you have no chance of getting it back on the table. Um, one of the most important principles to have when trying to receive the serve is to actively do something. So even if, you, if you're not sure, if you guess wrong, let's say, think, you think it's topspin but it's actually a backspin ball, being wrong that one time and being like drastically wrong is okay. That's, that's a good step in being able to return the ball the next time because if you don't do anything, then you won't be able to adjust from there. If you decisively go and play a push or a flip or a loop, then it doesn't work. You can say, okay, the next time that person gives me that serve, I know that it's backspin instead of topspin or topspin instead of backspin, and you can adjust accordingly. So being able to be very decisive and actively try to play a, a real stroke, a real shot where you're trying to impart something on the ball is one of the most important principles to receiving serves better. Yes? Two things with, <clears throat> with what Chance just said. I mean, he's right that you, can't, that you can't just touch the ball and expect to get it back on the table or expect to put yourself in a good position for the next shot. So there's a couple of things you can do. One, one is you don't know what the guy's serving. So we've said this a bunch of times especially long serves, take a step back. Like Chance just said, it. you reach forward, you take the full force of all that spin that somebody's trying to put on that ball. Yeah. So wait longer. Wait longer, the ball's got a lot less spin. It, it, it just is gonna be a lot easier to return the ball. Yes. Secondly, the other thing I was gonna say is, and I, I don't know if other people have said this, but I always say service return is a footwork drill got to move your feet into position. So if you just stand there and try to squat the ball with your hand, you know, with your arms, like, like a lot of other shots, similar to all the other shots, you got to get in position, put your body in a good position in order to return the serve in, in a good way. I'm not going to say correctly, there's a lot of different ways to, you know, return serves. I mean, sometimes you're just trying to survive. There's no doubt about it. Sometimes you're just hacking that ball back. You have no idea, but really get in the habit of moving your feet into position when you try to return the serve. Yeah, especially for the short serve, right? A lot of, I see a lot of people like when they, the ball comes short, they just reach their hand like this, and it's very hard to control the ball if you're far from the ball. Right? Especially for the short ball, make sure your, your head, your body is like closer to the ball, so the closer you are, more control you have, and more you can see the ball, and so you can take, like, you can do like a better decision. So make sure you're closer to the ball, especially for the short balls. And then for the long one, like, like they said, you can wait a little bit longer, right? And then you can return. Unless if you're 100% of the spin and depth, then you can, okay, you can take like a, like you can go like short balls off the bounce, right? You can like go quicker if you're 100% sure, but if you're not sure, you're having trouble receiving the return to serve, then you can take longer, right? So then the spin dies a little bit more and then you can be able to receive uh, better. Okay. Can I say one more yeah. thing? Yeah, absolutely. So, I, I know I said this, I think, I don't know, two days ago or whatever. If you're playing matches and you know who you're going to play, and this isn't specifically the techniques and everything, but scouting your opponents, again, if you have a match coming up, for me, the most important thing for me is to watch what my opponent's serving and how the other person is receiving that serve. 
So what? So when I get on the table, heck, what if that person's doing, the, his opponent's doing a good job of returning the serve, well, I'm going to do the same thing. Do I need to step in and flip it, or what, what do I need to do? The same motion? Well, when I see that motion, then I'm going to do the same thing. It gives me a lot better idea. So it comes back to scouting again. That, that, again, that's not technique, but that's matches the reality of winning matches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Being able to have a better idea of what you want to be doing based on, you know, seeing how other players are receiving that serve. And also, just like, you can see how the other player is trying to set up their game. So maybe they serve and they're really waiting on their backhand side. They're trying to get their forehand into play. Um, or maybe they serve more from the middle and they're standing right in the center of the table. So just being able to see, you know, what it is that the other player is trying to do after the serve, can you give you an idea of how you might want to try to return to a specific location or more actively or more passively as well? Good. Uh, yes, yeah, sugar. Yes. Uh, after the opponent serve, yes. which point should I put my leg? For example, when Yes. Yes. Uh, and, and this is a common problem for a lot of you. Um, I would say as soon as you can recognize that the ball is short or half long or long is when you want to move. So the sooner the better. Ideally, you'll be able to recognize the depth that the ball is going to come, which is the most important thing for the movement, being able to recognize if it's going to be very short or kind of half long or very long. Um, as soon as you can recognize that, that's when you want to move. You don't want to wait until the ball is crossing the net or coming to your side. So the better you can do to really see the motion from your opponent, as well as the first bounce on their side, is going to tell you how deep the ball is going to come. So if they're swinging way back and giving like a very strong, fast motion, and the ball is landing very, very close to the white line on their side, you know that ball is going to come deep, you might need to give a little bit more space, right? Or maybe they're giving like a very soft, controlled motion and their ball is hitting fairly close to the net on your side, or on their side, I'm sorry, um, then you know that the ball is going to come quite short. So you can start stepping in. You don't need to wait for the ball to cross the net. You can already be moving in for that ball. Does that answer your, yeah, good. Okay, and any other questions? Uh, yeah. Like we, we talked before, right? It's always better to expect the worst, right? So always expect the, the deep serve, like the fast deep serve. And if it's short, then you can always step in, right? Some people they start like stepping in before, and then the, the fast serve, the long serve come, and they get surprised. And that's much harder to do than stepping in. Right? Yeah. Good. Yes. Uh, you have a guide about where you stand. Yeah, good, good, good question. So how, how far away from the table you should set up to receive the serve, right? Uh-huh, good, good, good. Yeah. So it, it will vary, uh, sometimes fairly drastically from player to player. Um, and it has a lot to do with uh, what you prefer. So if you're more of a forehand oriented player, then probably you're gonna stand more off to the left uh, and set up to where you can receive more often with your forehand and vice versa if you're a more backhand oriented player you're going to stand a little bit more off to the right so that you can set up more of the table with your backhand. Um, the, the depth at which you stand uh, has a lot to do with how comfortable you are receiving the deep serves. So if you have a lot of problems receiving the fast deep serve then I would highly recommend standing a little bit further back because as Jeff said, it is significantly easier to move in than it is to move out. Um, so if you have a pretty quick stroke and you're able to generate a lot of spin very quickly, you can stand quite close and it's not a problem for you. If you're having like a longer, more, uh, more follow through swing where you're, you're taking the ball a little bit later and generating spin by following all the way through it, then you might need a little bit more space. You might stand a little bit further back. And especially for you, Paul, as you're quite tall, you might also be a little bit further back than like Sue, for example, who's a little bit smaller. Go ahead. Uh, 
Most players will make some small adjustments. Not all. Um, some people just set up where they're most comfortable, but most players will adjust their positioning on where they set up from based on where the other player is standing to serve because that affects the angles pretty significantly. Um, but that's more of a personal preference than like a mandatory thing. One other thing with the older players, like and I put myself obviously in that category, is a lot of a lot of people like to serve to your middle, you know, to your elbow, you know, into your body, whatever. So someone will serve a long serve to you. So like in terms of where to stand, and I I worked on this with Chance a couple years ago. I started returning more balls with my backhand, okay, because I, if, you, if somebody's serving a serve right into your body or into your middle. To take a forehand, it's a big movement. You've got to move your legs quite a bit to get into position in order to take a forehand. But to take a backhand, it's it's much smaller movement generally, depending where the person's serving. So I, I I became a little more. You might want to become a little more backhand oriented. Sometimes it's a little easier to return it because you don't have to move as much. You know, sometimes when people figure that out that you're taking it with your backhand, so the serve keeps going a little bit more over. You know, but but it is, you know, it's a bigger movement if you got to if you got to get to to the side and take a take a forehand. So that, for me personally, that affects where I stand on the table. Also, yeah. Uh, yeah. One, 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 so one, one, one more thing for you regarding your your question is usually right. Usually, for example, if a right hand mid player he serves from the left side rather than the lefty from the left. Oh, from the, uh, from the left side, the other side. Uh, usually, we just want to adjust a little bit your position right towards the right where. So, if the lefty starts from the left, right, you want to be a little bit more to the right side. And if the right handed goes from the left, you want to be a little bit more to the left. It's similar to when you change direction, right? Let's say you're doing back and back and cross. When you change the down the line, right, you, you don't stay stand here because if they go cross, right, it's hard for you to read. So, as soon as you change, you're going to move a little bit to the right right corner so that you can cover the down the line shot as well as the cross court. Similar to the when you receive, right from the right hander from the left side, you want to be a little bit more to the left side. And then when the left person serves from the other side, you also always want to also want to be a little bit on the right side right? so you can cover more of the angle. Carrie. Yeah. Yep. I had a question about doubles. Um, receiving um, side spin. Oh, hey. Wow. Where do you stand in order to compensate for that side spin? Because I've been blown out of tournaments. So it, it matters pretty significantly um, on like the dynamic that you have with your partner because if your partner is going to take up more space or less space, that's going to change on your starting position. So you, you got to communicate with your partner where you should be standing and where he should be standing because you don't want to be you know, standing so far over to the left that your partner ends up way outside of the, the table, right? Um, and it also depends on if you're trying to receive with your backhand or with your forehand. So a, a good general rule is that you get on the inside of the ball. So if you picture the ball uh, is spinning out or out towards away from you this way, like out to your forehand, being able to catch the ball from this side, you have more control over it if you get the ball way out here, it's going to pull out the other way, right? So being able to touch the other side of the ball the same way when the ball is curving into your body. If you're way crunched in here, the ball just ricochets off of you. But if you can touch the other side, you have more control, right? Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, yeah. One other thing to think about with side spin is where you touch the ball. So it depends on your style. Like in your style, you have a different kind of. You're a little hybridy. I don't know what to call your style exactly. You do special. Your, you do your, special. But you come at the ball quite a bit. So with side spin, the ball is spinning the fastest on the outside of the ball, right? It's spinning fast. The, in, the, the top of the ball, it's not going anywhere. The bottom of the ball, not going anywhere. If somebody's, if you can see that that ball side spin, it's easy to push it back or kind of come out or loop it over the top. Okay. If you touch the side of the ball, the ball shoots off. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I saw it in the tournament. You know, that's yeah. The could, couldn't receive a side spin. So okay. the, th the thing is, if you if you go in there and put, like Chance talking about the inside, so he's talking about completely countering the spin. Mm -hmm. 
But if you, but a lot of players, they want to go to the outside because that's just what naturally comes to them, and then that ball just shoots off. Mm. So uh, pushing sometimes is hard because the ball will pop up. But try to, but you can remember that that ball on the top is not spinning that fast, and the ball on the bottom is not fast. But outside is super fast, so it's really going to react. And if you just touch it behind, you know, it, it's spinning the fastest, so yeah. it's going to jump whichever way. Uh, I one of the big things, as Blake said, he's talking about the axis point where which part of the ball is spinning. Um, if it's just side spin coming at you, the easiest way to counter that is to treat it as if it was a top spin ball. Just ignore the, 